All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, give a few seconds for everybody to tune in. Uh, thank you for all that, uh, all the familiar faces and comments. Uh, yes, do read the research yourself. Um, I'm going to talk about some paper here, and also I have the links in the description box for you all to check it out later on. All right. So, um, welcome back. This week, okay. So last year, around this time, I just want to refresh everybody's mind a little bit. Okay, let's see here. Last year, around this time, uh, actually, I made a video uh, titled "Post COVID Vaccine Disorder and Long COVID Could They Be Related?" Now, in that video, I highlighted several studies of how the two topics could be related, and a few of you also uh, graciously willing to spend the time to share your stories with me on Zoom. Uh, and I have uh, posted two of those patient videos there, and I thank uh, them again. Uh, now, so this week, I am going to give an update to share some new knowledge. We have gained in this past year. Now, just a small update, not so much scientific, but I try to point out some of the interesting finding of this topic. And I know someone, uh, if you have long COVID, and you would believe uh, some people may believe that uh, or may wonder the vaccine may help to reduce long COVID symptoms. But the question is, could the vaccine do the opposite and worsen long COVID symptoms? Right. Um, so. With the new updated um, COVID booster, some uh, very prominent uh, doctors are doing research in the field who do long COVID research, such as Dr. Eric Topo, that strongly basically suggest people with long COVID to receive the vaccine because a new prospective study suggests an overall benefit. So, well, let's read to, into that study, right? We always need to read the study ourselves. The study uh, Dr. Eric Topo referred to is a recent article that is published on uh, September 15th of this year, so fairly recent in the International Journal of Infectious Disease by a Canadian research team. Now, this is a prospective observational cohort study in which they look at the number of uh, long COVID symptoms uh, and affected organ systems and psychological well-being scores before and after patients with uh, long COVID getting a, the vaccine. Now, in addition to all the patient reported factors, they also look at the different immunological and physiological cellular changes after COVID-19 vaccine in these particular um, long COVID patients. So the big highlight, and a highlight for you, the authors made the biggest highlight of the entire article quite obvious, the first statement. They claimed their findings suggested COVID-19 vaccine, uh, you know, post CC, uh, PCC means after having long COVID, uh, reduced the number of symptoms and increased well-being. So in other words, that they, they, they're helpful, okay? So uh, the vaccine helped long COVID patients, and that's why Dr. Eric Topo uh, mentioned that in his tweet. Now, this paper also claimed that it helped to reduce some inflammatory uh, markers. Now, I believe long COVID symptoms, uh, the symptom-wise, means most for the average populations because uh, that's really bothersome, okay, and has a negative impact on a uh, daily basis. So let's read into the article, but with a focus particularly on those symptomatic findings, okay? Now, remember, always remember, remember, details are always in the devil there, even though the, the big picture says, well, there's benefit, but what else? What else is in there? Well, let's go down there. So if we, uh, there's a lot of like methodology, like any other lot of papers. Uh, there's results reporting some inflammatory markers, you know, physiological changes and all these, uh, but with the focus on the sim symptomatic part, okay, it is in the longitudinal study sections. So they focused on 36 participants in this analysis. Not a huge number, not a huge number. They reported after the participant participants had 
one or two vaccine doses, there were statistically significant reduction in serum ferritin levels, okay, less long COVID symptoms, and fewer organ system affected, and higher WHO5 uh, well-being index scores. Now, notice that the p-values were all very small, some were even less than 0.001. Now, so the differences were quite real, okay, even given with a small sample size. So it's not just a random occurrence, that's what they mean. Now, however, when we read the next line here, which I highlighted in red, um, so even though 77.8 participants reported improved well-being scores, 7.4% uh, reported worse, and 18, uh, about 14.8% participants reported no change. Right? Now, in terms of long COVID symptoms, 86% reported less. That's great. Uh, 8.3, however, reported worsens of long COVID symptoms after the COVID-19 vaccine. Mm, that's a little bit alarming, all right? Now, so the question was why, right? Why that little bit of people say it's not helping them or making them worse? Now, this paper is an observational study. Really, they didn't, uh, you know, make any... Um, explanation, although they they saw that they reduced uh, systematic inflammation markers, but these findings, however, did not translate to symptom improvement in almost 1 in 10, or about 8%, so about 1 in 10, you could say that. Uh, so um, so they, they did not provide any explanations to that. Now, we could always argue that, well, this paper is observational, perspective, uh, it's very small sample size, 36 is quite small. Now, the problem is that for some people with long COVID symptoms from any, well, from infections or from other means, uh, you know, hoping that the vaccine could help with reducing symptoms, there is about one in 10 chance that the vaccine could even make it worse. And the scientific community currently does not have a good answer for that. And I believe that uh, taking any medical intervention should not be a game of chance, right? Now, if you are a strong vaccine supporter, I know someone tune in, uh, that you may think that I'm making things up and discouraging people from getting the vaccine. And I have to say that on the contrary, I'm trying to speak up Okay, for the vaccine supporters who are afraid to even discuss such topics in the current climate. And why is that? Let's see. Let's look at here. Now, here is a actually the title of this today's video. I did not came up with that. It's Elephant in the Room. It's a title that I stumbled, stumbled upon a few days ago on a Reddit discussion. Now, this person started this post, okay, asking if anyone else... Uh, so long COVID symptoms become exacerbated or worsened after the vaccine. Now, this person appeared to be very hesitant to talk about this topic, fearing to be labeled as an anti-vaxxer. You know, this person clearly said, I'm not an anti-vaxxer, but is it possible that the vaccine is contra contraindicated for some people with long COVID, right? That's, the, that's what this person want to talk about. Now, I'm not going to read through all the responses with you here in this video. Uh, I have the link there. You can uh, go check it out, read through it if you're interested. Uh, but, you know, basically, in fact, there are quite a few people shared a similar story of having worsening symptoms in the comments. Now, one person, okay, I scroll down very quickly, uh, did a count, okay, 20 posts uh, that reported worsened symptoms, five reported improvements, and four reported no changes. Now, certainly, well, this is just some story you could say that's made up, okay? You, if you don't like what you see, you can always say that. Now, we cannot ca directly count these things as direct, you know, real medical evidence, but it does give us a glimpse that not everyone suffering from long COVID can benefit from getting more vaccines. And some will have no changes. Uh, some may even get worse. The most unfortunate part, I think, is that people are afraid to talk about it, uh, about that these days. And some providers would not believe vaccines could worsen long COVID symptoms. Now, let's look at another study here. So I always have a different study to give you some, you know, complete pictures here. Now, this is another recent study published 
early September of this year in the Lancet, okay, Regional Health Europe Journal. So it's more focusing on the Europe side of the population. Now, this article, like the last one, is also a two-year perspective observational cohort study looking at long COVID recovery factors. Now, this study included 548 individuals and uh, with all these individuals, 341 with PCC, PCC again means long COVID, and in about, uh, you know, in 207, okay, without, okay, made a full recovery, means may, they, they had COVID, but they don't have long COVID uh, in this two years time. So let's scroll down, well, I'll highlight a, a little bit here, only 26 subject recovered from long COVID during the follow-up, but well, let's look at the detail, okay, a little bit. Scroll down a little bit. Okay, so again here, uh, 548 participants, 341 with long COVID, 207 without long COVID. And looks as, look at some characteristics of these, you know, people's okay baselines. Uh, so I wonder what kind of string, okay, they, they got infected. Now, since this is a two-year observational study, so it has to date back pretty far, uh, pretty far back. So. Uh, most of them, okay, 93.3% of them, okay, were infected with the ancestral or the Wuhan strain, okay, uh, and then about 23, only 6.7 of them infected with the alpha strain. So definitely is not the same thing that we are experiencing right now, but it is good data to look back, look back at. Now, uh, in those... Uh, Patients, okay, they break down their vaccination status. 87.7% of the long COVID uh, patients received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine after infections. Fairly high amount because at that time, we always encourage people, well, you even though you long got, long, uh, got COVID, well, let another dose of it, okay, it will boost your immunity. I think so that's why a lot of the people, okay, took that that recommendations and got it. And 11.7% of them uh, had, you know, had COVID, didn't get another vaccines of those. Now, uh, break it further down, about 30% of those uh, received three doses. All right, so probably they were hoping that, well, since they have long COVID, well, hoping the vaccines could help them recover, okay, reduce long COVID symptoms. So 30% of them re uh, received three doses. Now, the study did not explicitly list which vaccine they received, but based on this multi-dose regimen, we could assume that there could be at least one or more doses of mRNA vaccines in there, okay, in the mix. Like it could be some AstraZeneca, we're not too sure it in uh, based on this paper. Well, so the question you asked, right, did the long COVID patient recover, right? So only 26, right? 7.6 of the patient recovered from this long COVID during this follow-up uh, two-year time, okay? Uh, now, but we have to be aware that long COVID you know, presents with many different symptoms. Some have more um, severe neurological, uh, such as you know, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, meaning uh, the heartbeat you know, faster than normal when a person changes from laying down to standing up. And I talk to patients and they, do ex they also express those symptoms uh, to me as well. Now, some are slightly more fortunate, okay, where the fatigue Okay, is the major long COVID symptoms. And of those that 26 who recovered in this study, 24 were from this fatigue dominant group. Okay, so most who suffer from other forms of more severe long COVID did not recover from long COVID in this study. Well, so what about COVID vaccinations and long COVID symptoms, right? That's what this title about, uh, this video is all about. Okay, this. Um, paper also touch upon, right? SARS-CoV-2 vaccinations and PCC symptoms, 288 of the 341, okay, or 84.4%, okay, received at least one dose of the vaccine. Um, and 217 of the 288 did not experiencing any changes in persistent symptoms after the first vaccination dose. So the vaccine didn't help, okay? Only three, okay, reported an improvement after one vaccine. But 
What is more alarming is that 25 reported worsening of long COVID symptoms after one dose of the COVID vaccine, and 21 uh, were transient, meaning well for a little bit temporary, but four had sustained worsening. So the vaccine made him worse for a long period of time. Well, and then what's even more alarming, I think, you know, to to wrap up here is that. Uh, uh, most who felt worse after one dose also felt worse after following immunization. So after another one, after another one, uh, that vaccine just didn't help at all to, with long COVID uh, symptoms. All right, so let's a little bit let's regroup a little bit here. Now, so we have observational data showing conflicting results. Well, some vac some people you know, okay got benefit you know, from uh, vaccines to help their long COVID symptoms, while some reported no change. Some even reported getting worse. Now, I think the major problem here right now is that sometimes people group all the long COVID um, patients together, but in fact, it is a very heterogeneous disease right now. It seems like uh, that with a disease like that, uh, there must be different treatments. And sadly, right now, it's only trial and errors. We've also seen people trying to use Paxlovid for it, and uh, you know, big big name school are doing those studies. Unfortunately, those studies were ended early. You know, I doubt there is very positive result because otherwise we'll be hearing it already, right? Um, so some patients, you know, reported some drug works. That's how it works. And then people start doing the, that research. It's like trial and errors sometimes. And some people say, well, vaccine worked for them for long COVID. Well, let's try it, right? So it's trial and error practice. And I don't think that's really the way to do it at this point. Um, unfortunately, most major uh, media you know, only report positive outcomes and downplay any of the negative or meaningless finding, right? If there's no improvement, let's not talk about it. It feels like that. And much too often, we only hear one side of the story if we don't dig deeper into a given COVID topic. That's why, uh, yeah, when you see a topic saying that highlights, well, it's benefiting, it reduced symptoms, but let's, let's read into it. Is it for everyone, for majority of the people, or did someone have a different result, right? That's why we need to read into it all the time. Now, on the positive side here, I well, don't want to be too negative here, but if you are someone who has developed a long COVID-like symptom illness because of COVID vaccine, okay, you are not alone, and it is uh, more talked about than a year ago now, you know, compared to last year of this time, and in fact, uh, uh, big name school, Yale uh, University School of Medicine uh, is, you know, you know, it's running a study called Listen, and which welcomes uh, people who are experiencing long COVID symptoms after vaccination. So they do recognize uh, re vaccinations could, you know, lead to these long COVID-like symptoms, and they want to study and learn more about this aspect. So if that's something for you, uh, if you're not aware of that yet, you know, you know, check it out. And I also have the link down there. So. To wrap up, and I know I did not provide a very much scientific explanation as to why the vaccine is linked to worsening of long, sim long COVID symptoms, because that isn't just a good answer yet. There's a lot of research going on, and it takes some time to get a more precise summary. But I will try to do that you know, in, in future videos, and I'll pay attention to this topic. Um, and I strongly believe that you know we need to figure out why this is happening for some people while not everyone else right now everyone you know i think should have the right to uh, get to know the full pictures of the vaccine and not just the flowery part okay there is some good thing there also something that is may not be as helpful in my opinion so um, that is necessary to make informed health decisions i think right so that is everything for in terms of content this week okay i see a lot of familiar names here again uh thank you very much let's let me quickly scroll through some of those um uh, worth mentioning comments and and we'll see um uh, if i can answer any questions and i know i've taken some questions i'll, I'll get get to the um uh some of the natural um um uh, i blink some of the uh, natural immunity topics okay um later on
So is there a common denominator in patients that suffer long COVID? Has there been uh, even research? I think uh, it seems to be women, okay, uh, that got or female patients reported more of the long COVID. And also seems in, some, uh, in one of the two studies that I mentioned today, they reported uh, male patients reported uh, more recovery, okay? So maybe there's some hormonal factors involved in that. Uh, uh, just like, you know, at the beginning of the, the pandemic, you know, male patients seems to have a worse outcome from acute illness. So, uh, and also with the vaccine, there's some hormonal factor that, you know, with the myocarditis, it's happened more so in young male. Uh, so this is something that we observed. We don't have a good scientific answers to that yet. All right. Um, yes, uh, Sam Paul. Yes, uh, it's it's more recognized these days. It's it's rare, but um, I don't think it is as rare as some of the the, the media portrayed. Okay, uh, like I said, I I do have talk. I have talked about talked to patients about that, and uh, I've seen a lot more people mentioning about that as well. So something is going on with vaccine linking to long COVID-like symptoms or long vaccine syndrome. You know, there's different names to it. But definitely something is going on and, uh, you know, people are trying to find out know, why is that. Um, yes, the, there seems to be a lot. Omicron seems to have less long COVID these days. Yes, that's also true. All right. So um, great discussions here. Um, but. Well, that's everything for now, for this week. Um, so uh, if you're new here, okay, uh, this channel is dedicated to helping people uh, live healthier lives with uh, easy to understand medical and pharmaceutical related topics. Uh, and if that's something uh, that interests you, that important for you, okay, I hope to see you again next time. So uh, take good care and have the good rest of the day. Have a good rest Sunday and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm. All right. Bye.